At the yard, rubber tire gantry cranes take the containers off the tractors and put them on the ground. But there's a lot more to this process than just heavy lifting. Shipping containers look alike. And unless you can match their numbers with the list, there's no way to tell them apart. From the moment they leave the Gudrun Maersk, 3,000 containers have to be precisely tracked. A misrouted container means unhappy customers and a bad reputation for Yangshan. A lost container is unthinkable. But it's unthinkable thoughts like these that keep operations manager Shi Min Hua fully focused throughout his shift. More than anywhere, the burden of success or failure rests squarely on his shoulders. For the duration of his shift, he'll bear the ultimate responsibility for keeping the operation on time and on track. The port runs 24 hours. We are under a lot of pressure to work fast. But we try our best to fulfill our service promises to our customers. If anything does go wrong, the buck stops with Xi Min Hua. And there's plenty that could go wrong. Before a ship sails, the shipping company's computers analyze the contents and destinations of its several thousand containers and assign every container a specific place on board. You know, the first port containers are the ones on top, and the last port containers are on the bottom. It's a pretty complex mathematical equation. If port operators make a mistake or fall behind schedule, they might have to ask permission to load containers in places other than the ones the computer assigned them. And that's not a question a ship's captain wants to hear. Containers loaded in the wrong places will confuse unloading in the next port. Badly loaded containers could make the ship unstable on the open sea. And Yangshan's competitors, Hong Kong and Singapore, each handle over 20 million containers a year, with an error rate of less than 1%. All good reasons why no one at Yangshan wants to rock the boat. Fortunately, Yangshan has a brain to match its brawn. A cutting-edge control system developed by the port of Shanghai. The operation control room has a highly developed CCTV supervising system, which can help to detect any potential problems. We communicate through walkie-talkie. There are laptop computers on the wall that receive a detailed operation plan delivered by the computer system. Cranes, trucks and rubber tire gantry cranes all have cab displays electronically linked to the port control room. So crane operators and drivers know exactly which containers they're moving when to move them, and where they go. The trucks receive wireless orders from the computer terminal in the operation control room. Portable mini-computers in the trucks display instructions on what to do and where to go. The trucks we use here are some of the best. They are equipped to transport containers on the left and the right. And the driver's cab has windows on three sides, which allows the driver to see a lot more. The Yangshan system maximizes efficiency. 
sending ship after ship back to sea on schedule, making crews and owners happy. So they're trying to sail at a specific time to meet a, a berthing window at another port down the road. Delays are just not, you know, not, not acceptable. The unloading and loading goes on all night. And past the break of day. 20 hours after she docked, the Gudrun Musk departs Yangshan. Leaving behind 3,000 containers filled with imported goods. Taking with her 2,000 others filled with exports. Xi Minhua and the Yangshan team can finally relax and call it a day. A very long day. But Yangshan's job isn't over yet. 3,000 shipping containers have to be delivered. Customers have waited weeks for the Gudrun Musk to bring them across the ocean. And now they're sitting on an island, 32 kilometers. To compete with other world-class container ports, Yangshan must move over 20 million shipping containers per year. But how do you maintain your competitive edge when you're on an island in the middle of the ocean? You build another megastructure. The Donghai Bridge. Six lanes wide and 32 kilometers long. More than 12 times longer than the Golden Gate Bridge. The second longest ocean-spanning bridge in the world. The longest is just 80 kilometers to the west, spanning Hangzhou Bay. Building a bridge this long on land would be tough. Building it over the open sea is a logistical nightmare. It's not like you're a steel worker building a skyscraper. I mean, you don't have electricity out there. Everything that you need to do your job has to be taken in by barge and back and forth in, in that fashion. Just designing the Donghai Bridge was a mega challenge. It had to be wide enough for six lanes of truck traffic, high enough to let some of the world's biggest ships sail underneath, and strong enough to withstand all that nature would routinely throw at it. Typhoons every summer, currents ripping past at two meters per second, six meter waves, and that's just on the surface. From the mainland to Yangshan Islands, the seabed can vary in depth from 10 to 30 meters. And it's nothing but soft, unstable mud. Not a good foundation for six lanes of concrete highway, vibrating with heavily laden trucks. In cyberspace, engineers tested their bridge designs every way they could with waves, winds, truck accidents, and colliding megaships to discover which design would best survive. In the end, they chose not one design, but two. Most of Donghai is a box girder bridge made of over 600 concrete spans. The longest spans are the length of four volleyball courts. But in two places, it becomes a cable-stayed suspension bridge, with one span rising high enough to let ships pass underneath. And it spans the waters in a graceful S-curve, so ships passing under it can sail at angles to strong ocean currents. By 2002, 
engineers had a bridge that worked beautifully, on paper and in their computers. Now, they had to build it. First challenge, anchor kilometers of concrete in waterlogged mud, firmly enough to stand up in a typhoon. Engineers drove over 6,000 foundation piles into the sea floor. Positioning them with GPS and seven satellites within a three to five millimeter accuracy. 20 plus meters of water, then another 40 meters down below before they actually reached uh, bedrock. Next problem, how to build 600 concrete spans, some weighing over 2,000 tons. In the middle of a sea so rough, construction's possible only six months of the year. The solution was not to even try. Instead, the Donghai's builders pre-built its massive spans on land and towed them out to sea. I mean, it would be craziness to try to build the bridge, you know, piece by piece in that, in that position. And they had to actually, in the middle of the process, you know, actually construct this new barge with 1,600 uh, ton lifting capacity to move these bridge sections into position. From start to finish, nothing was routine about building Donghai Bridge, including the workers' lives. As construction moved further out to sea, massive bridge pilings did double duty as dormitories. On 10 December 2005, 42 months after construction began, the Donghai Bridge opened to traffic. Since then, nearly three million containers have crossed its S-shaped span. Under the watchful eyes of bridge operators. From this high-tech control room, they miss nothing that happens on, over, and under the world's second longest ocean bridge. Their eyes, some 80 surveillance cameras placed along its 32 kilometer length. Electronic eyes that never close. And for good reason. The Donghai Bridge is a triumph of engineering over nature. But nature isn't giving in that easily. Typhoons and fog can make driving on the Donghai Bridge hazardous. In 2006, super typhoon Shanshu battered China with powerful waves and winds. The bridge stood its ground. And by mid-2007, Yangshan had moved Shanghai from world's third biggest container port to number two. Only one million containers behind its rival Singapore. When it's completed in the year 2020, Yangshan Island will be the world's biggest container port. Its wharves stretching an awesome 20 kilometers, with berths for 50 ships capable of handling 25 million shipping containers a year. No city has ever achieved what, what Shanghai has done with the Yangshan Deepwater Port. It was a tremendously visionary uh, project. For the city fathers of Shanghai to actually create this um, over such a short time frame was tremendously far-sighted. It's a very emotional issue, I think, for everyone, from the guy in the street, you know, the, to the city leadership, to the, to the country leadership. Um, they all know that, you know, Shanghai is the number one port in China, will be the largest container port in the world. And, you know, that's something that you don't see 
in Europe or the United 